talk a little bit about like what goes into making a, a video that has the potential to go viral. Um, so, I mean, like this is something that we were getting asked all the time, especially when we were first, we had a couple of videos that were doing really well and going viral. Um, and then we like, I'm sure everybody that's watching this kind of felt the Facebook crunch where, you know, even to, you know, I think we have like 1.3 million likes on Facebook. We're lucky to get 10,000 views if we post one on Facebook now. Um, it like the math doesn't make sense. Um, but you know, really, um, I think again, what I would come back to is that kind of authenticity and tapping into something that people already kind of resonate with and starting with, with that as like a starting point of like, you know, what do people in my niche, like think is funny or like shocking or, um, you know, very emotional and try and tap into those pre-existing conditions with something that gets an emotional response. Um, and I think that's like a, kind of a great starting point. Um, there is, I was gonna say that we have a, like, Chris kind of put down, uh, what, like he did a lot of the videos. So he kind of um, created this guide on what he was using. Like it's kind of like re reverse engineering our videos called Proven, P-R-O-H-V-E-N. Um, and we threw a mastermind event a couple of years ago, actually, this is crazy. Like two years ago today, I think was the first oh, day nice. of it. Uh, <laughs> I didn't think of that. Um, but it's unconsciouscontent.com. I think the I think the PDF still should work. I haven't checked on it in a while, but um, I can link it to you guys too uh, if if you want to include that in the comments or whatever. Um, but it basically just kind of breaks down like the different elements that we've used in our videos, like to get people's attention, then to like mention the product, to like build a connection and stuff like that. So there was a bit of like method to our madness, but we also realized that. As we, as we went through the process and watched more and more videos that we were sort of creating this expectation that we could go viral with every video and it was not a sustainable path for us whatsoever and realized that, you know, it was sometimes better to create a video that doesn't go viral, but that we could put Facebook dollars behind and actually get, pe get people's attention and then, you know, start them into a funnel. So, you know, the first thing that I always say to people when they're like, hey, we want to create a viral video, I'm like, well, that would be great if your your video goes viral, but you should just focus on creating a great video that you know mm -hmm. achieves specific outcomes, like explaining your product or you know acquiring a customer or just kind of like getting people's attention. So you can start that conversation with that first video view and then retargeting them after that. So it was a lesson that we learned that you know going viral is not always the best intention to have. It's just a fabulous bonus if it happens. Yeah, because and that's going to lead potentially to the, that inauthentic sort of yeah. nature. And I think you guys experimented with that. Even you guys went Absolutely. down the funnel. You started yeah. with a certain kind of video, and then in order to keep getting it, you had to push it further and further away from its yeah. initial value. And we've we've shot videos that cost you know one hundred and twenty thousand dollars, and that brought in you know not that much in revenue, like half as much in revenue. Like they were great for brand building; they were seen by a lot of people. So it's kind of hard to measure, but. We had acquisition specific videos that were just for Facebook ads that we shot for like a thousand bucks that would bring in, you know, 200 grand in revenue uh, over a couple months. So we just sort of realized you know, like our initial video before, like, I think it brought in about, I would say two and a half million dollars that we can attribute to it. And it costs us 1800 bucks, you know, That's so perfect. like talk about that video for a sec. So what was what were the elements that made that one such a success besides tapping into a, a big wave? Like what? What was the the authenticity that that really grabbed people there? Did it address a pain point that that everyone shares with the beard or something? I think it like it was just like it was original in the beard market. Um, like no one had done something like that in the beard market about talking about like bearded guys. Like there had been you know your viral thread videos of like beards are really big right now. Do, 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 do. Uh, but yeah. no one had done something that was just like kind of like in your face. Like we have a beard and like you know join the club and do this. So. I think that just because it was so fresh, um, it was able to, you know, really connect with a lot of people. And, um, you know, I can't pretend for a second that we didn't have, you know, this great company that started before us called Dollar Shave Club that did an extremely great job of explaining subscription e-commerce to a lot of people who didn't understand it before that. So being able to like, people were like, oh, we get it. It's like that model, but, you know, for people that don't shave, um, yeah. so that, that, how that, you know, them kind of breaking down those barriers, like they, they were one of the, I think like one of the best examples of subscription e-commerce, like done right in a time when no one really understood subscription e-commerce. They were the pioneers in a lot of ways. 
And I really like that you guys took the the flip side of the coin approach, you know, like if these guys are doing it on this for this, you know, societal trend, like the societal trend of not shaving is actually bigger or right now it is over the past several years has been. So it's like you take the same model, but the flip side of it in a sort of non-competitive space, it's it's really, I just got my mind spinning about like other, you know, other things that are, that are out there right now that could kind of be flipped on their head and uh and subscribe to on the other side too it's a uh, all right so are you consistently like what what is what does your time look like now so are you still how involved in the day-to-day -day at uh, the beard club are you and then what are your main focuses so i'm i'm not involved really in hardly any of the day-to-day -day in beard club anymore uh we hired an amazing executive team and even my business partner chris um has just